well, it threw the jerk bait down a little bit. Um, there's some wood here on the steeper bank leading back into these spawning flats. So pick up my flipping stick with a jig on it, kind of toss it around these laydowns and see what happens. It's a perfect spot for these pre-spawn fish. You know, a lot of times on these, when they're in pre-spawn, the flatter banks really won't hold a lot of fish until you know it gets right the right time of day when they move up out of the deeper water. But these steeper banks, I mean, here I'm sitting in 17 foot and flipping a lay down. So uh, you know, it's just a good idea whenever you come across that to to pick up a flipping stick, pitch something in it, whether it be a jig or you know a bigger type of bait because those big females they want a big meal before they spawn. Um, you know, the water's kind of off color, so I just went with the standard brown and black jig with a green pumpkin trailer. You know, it's, it's a favorite of big fish, so we'll see what happens here. You know, another, another point to make is, especially this time of year, you know, when, when you feel like there's fish in certain areas. Don't just throw out a piece of wood or a brush pile or something just once. I mean, really, if you feel like there's a fish there, a lot of times, you know, the third or fourth or even fifth presentation will get you that bite. So, you know, really w work it over if you feel like, you know, the potential for a fish is, is in that area. Well, I flipped these laydowns pretty good, you know. Nothing on this attempt, but across, the, across this little cove right here, there's some dead tulies that look pretty interesting. You know, there's two secondary points that, that are right in the spawning area, so maybe some fish have already filtered back, and we'll go over there and see if we can't flip one out of those dead tulies. Um, go give it a shot anyway. <clears throat> You know, this time of year, my favorite bait to flip or, you know, even pitch around steeper banks and stuff like that is a jig. Um, my favorite all-time color for pretty much any lake in the country that I fished is just a regular black and blue. Um, you know, paired with a green pumpkin trailer or even a black and blue, you know, creature of your choice, really. Um, but I chose the brown and black today just because the water's a little more clearer than than normal here and you know I figured the black and blue was probably too much for these fish but uh, you know the sizes I like to throw usually when the water temp is cold and, and you know the fish are in pre-spawn the lightest jig I can get away with I've caught a lot of them on the quarter ounce um, in this case I was throwing a 3 8 ounce and um, you know I, I generally flip minimum of 20 pound fluorocarbon back in the day I was flipping uh, you know, monofilament, but it just seems I get m way more feel with fluorocarbon these days. And, you know, 20 to 25, you know, 100% trialing fluorocarbon is the way I go. Um, a 765 Powell Max flipping stick with a uh, Revo Premier, you know, it lightens up these big heavy rods. This rod is seven and a half feet long. So if you have a heavy reel on there after a long day of flipping, you're pretty much wore out. So this Revo Premier is the way to go and uh, you know it'll catch you some big fish just throwing jigs you know not necessarily in laydowns but just kind of flipping them down the bank you know especially in dirty water circumstances so give it a try next time you're out on the lake all right we just pulled up over here on these dead tulies you know and, and what we got here is basically we're in the spawning grounds right now we got some really flat points to run out the close to deep water access meaning the creek channel runs just just behind us here so these fish will filter in and out and come up and spawn, but a lot of times they'll, the bigger females and even some of the smaller bucks will stage up in these dead tulies. You know, like I, um, like I said before, the lake came up like 20 foot, so all this is pretty new vegetation for them, and they, they get in there and they love it. So we're just going to take our time and come in here and flip these dead tulies. I'm just throwing one of those paycheck punch skir skirts. You know, um, just came out on the market a few months ago, but I've caught a lot of fish on it. And, you know, it just adds a lot of bulk to a, to a regular beaver type bait. Um, you know, and it's, it's really important this time of year, especially not to get in a big hurry when you're flipping this type of stuff. You know, you really want to take your time and dissect it because a lot of times those fish don't want to move very far to eat a bait. 
Um, they're not in like a chase mode and sometimes you just got to put it right on their head so you know just taking your time making a bunch of flips and hopefully putting it right on one's head and you trigger them to bite. You know <clears throat> over the years I found also that doing this the, the more dense the vegetation the the more apt to get in a bite you are. Um, and I think it's just because of the, the fact that, you know, with the, with the high sun that we have today, that canopy pretty much underneath it is warmer than anywhere else. You know, these standing tulies that are just kind of isolated, you know, that, th there could be fish in those, but a lot of times they're seeking the warmth. And so the matted vegetation, here we have tulies, will actually act like a blanket for those fish. And, and right underneath there is the warmest part of the water and they'll just sit there and wait, you know, wait, wait for everything to get right and spawn. Um, but it's a good way to catch some big ones this time of year. Another thing that I've, that I've kind of gotten really dialed into is this, this True Tungsten Denny Bauer flipping weight. Ever since these came out, man, it makes getting through this, this thicker vegetation a lot easier. Um, you know, you don't have to throw as big of a weight to get through anymore. And it, you know, it just, it just fits the, the bait, whatever your bait you're throwing, it, it makes it more, you know, compact and sleek. And it, I've just caught a lot more fish using these than the standard, you know, bigger tungsten weights. Well, I've pretty much covered that little bay right there, but you know, that, that doesn't discourage me at all not getting a bite because I know that at some point, either today or tomorrow, maybe, you know, here in a couple hours after the sun heats it up more, there's gonna be fish in here. But, uh, so I mean, I might even come back today and try it here in a little while, you know, with the same type of deal. It's just a matter of the fish wanting to move in. Maybe they're right underneath the boat right now, they haven't got under there, so. But I'm gonna cover these two outside little points, these little secondary points with a, with a lipless crankbait. I'm throwing this TN70, you know, uh, red is,